Come, let us sing for the joy of the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. Welcome to worship. You know, every Sunday here is a good Sunday, but today is an extra special Sunday because we have three families that are here to dedicate their sons to God. How's that for a Father's Day celebration? Happy Father's Day. We celebrate all dads today. It's an often overlooked and unappreciated role, and today we say we love you. And we appreciate you always. The babies that we'll be dedicating today were all born during COVID. So for a long time, it was not safe for them to gather around large crowds. And today just worked out for all of them. What an honor and a privilege that is for us. And we are extremely grateful to be a part of this very special day. Brinley and Eden will be returning today from a weekend at Discovery Camp in Guthrie. Jack and Tucker will leave tomorrow for a week at Junior Camp. And Aiden and Gina are going to be going to Make Promises Happen Camp this summer. So keep all of them in your thoughts and prayers and ask them about their experiences when they return. We have Javen, Mia, and Riley also that are serving at a lot of Make Promises make promises happen camps this summer as well. So pray for all of those campers um, that they have an incredible experience. The children's tables have been prepared with activities to connect children to worship. Please take advantage of those. We love having all ages in worship together. FCC Summer Cups are out in the narthex for our visitors. Please grab one and take just a minute to fill out the visitor's card and drop it in the offering plate so that we can connect you in the manner that you prefer. And thank you so much for visiting with us today. You have probably noticed that our Jamaica donations are accumulating. This may look like a lot, but we still have lots of supplies to collect. We have 32 participants that are heading to serve July the 9th through the 16th. A list of our needs are out on the table in the narthex. It looks like this. If you would like to join in our Jamaica mission by contributing simple supplies, then please grab a list and purchase any of the needed items and just leave them 
here at the table. Your help in that manner is very much appreciated. And as Jackie, as Outreach Chair Jackie German shared last week, we have two opportunities to serve international missions this month. There is also a giving jar that has been placed by the communion table, and donations placed in that jar will benefit World Kitchen that serves in the Ukraine. So we appreciate your help with those projects. If you would, please, let's bow our hearts and minds in prayer. Perfect Father. Today we gather in celebration and in honor of you. You are amazing, and we are in awe of your good and perfect gifts. Today, may our words and our offerings, our praise and our prayers be gifts to you. You are worthy of everything that we have to give, our very best, because you give us your very best. Today as we gather, we thank you for those faces that aren't here with us every week and yet bring such great joy to our hearts. That's the love that you've put there, the love of the Father implanted within us for his creation. Thank you, God, for loving us. Amen. Draw your attention now to even more life of the church. church and invite you all to stand with us and, uh, and start with uh, to worship.
To the depths of the sea, creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring, every creature unique in the song.
we come to you this morning reminded that we were given the commandments for right living and we must let them take root in our hearts and seek to obey. It is by obedience to God's word that the abundance comes. Pray that God will be worshiped above all else. Pray that the Lord's name will be honored. Pray that the family will be restored and respected as God designed. Pray that the culture of death would be broken and that a culture of life will reign. Pray that truth is spoken and integrity and concern for others is held high. Pray that our children obtain salvation, grow in grace, learn to live a life of love. Pray they grow to find your word precious, to act justly in all they do, to show proper respect for everyone. Let love and faithfulness never leave us. Let strength and courage be our character and in our actions. Create in us a pure heart. Place in us the prayer you taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With children that they are going to have dedicated forward, the parents will just bring them up at first. The parent, well, grandparents can come to, come on up. Whoever's with them, come on up. And have, <laughs> looks like we're handing off to parents. So parents, parents and babies, come on up. And just spread out right here in the front, if you would. Hi. Yeah, right back here is fine. That would be great. Good morning, Bodhi. It's different from up here, isn't it? Not, not used to being up front. You're used to being in the back, huh? And there's candles. Well, let me introduce to you uh, Emmett Minx, who is the son of Tyler and Cassidy Minx. Bodie Leach, who is the son of Drew and Christy Leach. I know, I know. It's so great, isn't it? And also baby Theo, who has been lovingly gifted by God and is cared for by Heath and Ashley Bowman. These families have come forward today to make a pledge um, to the... Uh, uh, hi. Hi. A pledge before God and this congregation to raise these children in a way that honors the Lord. Here is my charge to the parents. The primary responsibility for caring for First Emmett and Bodie um, rests on his parents, Tyler and Cassidy and Drew and Christy. Theo is a unique situation with the responsibility distributed to various places, but for this time, gifted by God primarily to Heath and Ashley. The scriptures say, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. These commandments I give you today and ask you to write them on your hearts, impress them on your children, talk about them when you're at home and when you sit, when you're along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tyler, Cassidy, Drew, Christy, Ashley, and Heath, as you take on this task, may you do so with joy and peace, earnestly. You're going to come see me. Is that what you want? That's what God does get to do, isn't uh, it? Ooh, yeah, ooh. Earnestly seeking that you do this task with great joy and peace. May you earnestly seek the Lord daily for his wisdom, and in every situation and circumstance, on the easy days and on the hard days, and may every decision that you make um, be first and foremost guided by God and his wisdom. Jane says, if any of you seek wisdom, then ask God, because he gives liberally to all men. He changes not. Um, ask, and it will be given to you. So may you daily... Give thanks 
for your children and for the joy that they bring to your home. And as they grow, may you make the most of every single moment, teaching by example with lots and lots of love. And may these boys always know how much God loves them because of your faith and your trust and your confidence in God. And now, can I have all of the extended family please stand? These boys are surrounded by lots of love, so if you are part of their family, please stand up. And I want to charge you. Thank you for being here today, first and foremost. That's awesome. Emmett, Bodie, and Theo also have the benefit influenced by the extended family who have uh, been asked to provide backup support in their spiritual training. At this time, I asked them to receive their charge. It is our responsibility to provide caring support for these families. We are to be faithful in praying for them and support their efforts to establish a strong Christian home built on faith and understanding of God's never-failing love. With God's help, we are here to demonstrate a real interest in these little guys. Um, we are to be concerned for their welfare and well-being, and we are to make sure that they grow physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually. And now a charge to the church. Will you all please stand? You are another great influence here today. And at this time, I ask the congregation to accept their part of the responsibility of raising these boys. I charge you to do all you can to provide a place of worship, a safe place of worship, a community where Emmett and Bodie and Theo can hear the full counsel of God's word. I urge you to be faithful in providing opportunities for discipleship and to always demonstrate kindness toward all of our little ones and towards their parents who have, and those who have charge over them. I charge you to covenant before God to set an example in your lives and to maintain an atmosphere in this church that these little boys, every time they enter into this space or every time they're a part of any event or activity sponsored by this church, know how special they are to this church and to all of us, their parents and their guardians as well. And now, Tyler and Cassidy, here, I'm going to hand you off. I know, what makes me sad? All right, Tyler, Cassidy, Drew, and Christy, Ashley, and Heath. In the sight of God, sorry. In the sight of God, I'm not sorry. In the sight of God and in the presence of witnesses, do you all solemnly undertake to love Emmett and Bodie and Theo as much as God enables you on every occasion and opportunity and to share that love with them, the same love that you yourselves have received, if so say I do. Do you promise to use the gift of time that you've been given to teach Emmett and Bodhi and Theo about Jesus Christ as a means of salvation and eternal life? If you do, please say I do. And do you pledge, as best as you're able, to be guided by the Spirit, making your home a place where faith is evident by example? If so, say I do. And now, on the authority of God's holy word, and as a minister of Christ Church, I dedicate Emmett Meeks, Bodie Leach, and baby Theo unto the Lord and unto his service according to his will. Let's bow in prayer. And he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. God, we do love you. And it's a privilege to come before you any day. Today is no exception. We thank you for Emmett. We thank you for Bodhi. And we thank you for Theo. And for all who hold them in their hearts. We know that you honor our commitment to raise a child in your ways. Our prayer is that these boys... That these boys grow to love you with all their hearts, with all their souls, and with all their minds. We're declaring lives wholly devoted to you. We thank you in advance that these boys will grow in love for you every day of their lives. We pray that their relationship with you will always be a priority and that you will bless them in every way possible. We thank you for the gift of a relationship with you. And we are declaring that Emmett, Bodhi, 
and Thea will experience the gift of fullness of life just as you intend. Amen. And now I have for each of you a rosebud. As that bud blooms and grows, may you be reminded that sweet Bodhi will grow as well. Thank you. Can I hold you for just one second? Because I didn't get to do that. Oh, we love you, sweet boy. <laughs> I'd let him. I'd let all of them. They can just join me in a circle. All right. This one is for you. This one is for you. <laughs> We love you too, sweet boy. All right. And last but certainly not least, this is for you. And this is for you. One more. And this is for you. And we love you too, sweet boy. You're so sleepy, aren't you? All right. So you go get some rest. Thank you all very much. One more applause for God's gift. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> oh. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Welcome to another dad battle. Now, is anybody, and I mean anybody at all, willing to face our champion? Gentlemen, my son joined the golf team at school, so I bought him an extra pair of socks in case he gets a hole in one. Hole in one. His dad jokes are so effortless. See that? That's why he's the champ. That's nothing. The other day, my daughter said a good Christian dad would buy her a car. So I said, well, a good Christian kid would walk. Because that's what Jesus did. <laughs> Fathers! Son, just because God picked your nose doesn't mean you should. <laughs> when you start paying the bills, you can make some of the rules. Come on! Yeah. Yeah. Hold up! Who touched the thermostat? Yeah. Oh, yeah! That lawn isn't gonna mow itself. Let me stop what I'm doing and fix your boredom. Hi, Hungry. I'm Dad. <laughs> I love the smell of Home Depot in the morning. Oh, yeah. 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 Just wait till your mother gets home. Ah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no. uh, what? Pull my finger. Oh. Oh. Get in there. Get in there. You got this. Come on, Chan. Nah. Just rub some dirt on it. Oh. 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 Proud of you. You can do hard things. I love you, no matter what. When God made you, He made something very special. Proudest day of my life 
The day you made me a father! I thank God for you every time I get on my knees and pray. Oh, not again. Who gives this woman? No. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, you look at me. You look at me. Who gives this woman to, to be married to this man? Her mother and I do. Last week, we kicked off our summer series beginning with a four week study on the Ten Commandments. We talked about their relevance and their application to us today and what the Ten Commandments reveal about our understanding and our beliefs of God and how they fit into the God story. We learned that the Hebrew word debar is translated in English as commandment, but in Hebrew it actually means word. So for the Jewish people, these are the ten words of God, emphasizing God's covenant or promise to his people. The ten words actually appear two times in the Old Testament, in the books of Exodus and also in Deuteronomy, emphasizing their importance and yet revealing that there is a missing part. We learned that 19 comes before 20, meaning that God's salvation and covenant relationship with the people comes before the words regarding behavior or actions. Therefore, the law does not offer a way to salvation. God saves. The law is God's word on maintaining or living into the freedom that God has already granted the people. So today our focus is going to be on what is called the first table or the vertical table. Um, it is God's word that focuses on our relationship with God. Let's pray. God, there is nothing more important than getting this right because nothing compares with being in right relationship with you. Nothing can offer the freedom or the fullness of life that you provide and no one will ever love us like you do. You are are our perfect father and you have adopted us as children you offer an inheritance of freedom from everything that hinders and holds back help us to listen intently to your word today use it to accomplish your good and perfect will in each individual and in us collectively as a body of christ amen here now scripture from the book of exodus Oh, here now, scripture. <laughs> Sorry, Amy. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under, under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath, the Sabbath day, and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Thanks be to God for the word of God. 
You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, and you shall not bow down and worship them. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You shall not do any work. You or your son or daughter or your male or female slaves or your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. Some traditions number these as three commandments and others as four. They are, as I referred to earlier, usually called the first table or the vertical table, God's guidance on our relationship with Him. These words are intended to point us towards God. They reveal that the goal of life is to be a faith that is connected to God. We show, and they show us that in order to be connected to God, we need to sometimes disconnect from things that pull us away from God. They instruct us on how to use God's name, and they show us how we are to use some of our time, the Sabbath day. We are going to spend just a minute on each of these commandments. First, the Ten Commandments start with the ultimate instruction not to put anything in our lives ahead of God. Moses and Jesus both tell us that we are to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our might. God doesn't tell us that because he's in need of our attention. God is not some egocentric, attention-starved deity that demands our praise and worship. The reality is this. When we fail to put God first, our other relationships suffer. When we center our lives around anything other than God, good or bad, money, success, power, pleasure, appearance, our interpretation of the Bible, church, parts or pieces of worship, other relationships, anything. When our focus is anything other than God, any time that we prioritize anything at all above God, our other relationships suffer. If you think about that, you'll find out that it's true. Secondly, we are entrusted not to have idols in our lives. Note, this is not about artistic expression. This does not mean you're not supposed to paint the beauty that you're surrounded with or form or fashion artwork in honor of the God who created them. We aren't instructed not to create. This is about worshiping things other than God. And an idol can be anything, anything that we love, worship, or center our lives around that is not God. Luther wrote these famous words, a God means that to which we expect all good. A God means that from which we expect all good and to which we take refuge in all distress. That upon which we set our heart and put our trust becomes our God. We don't really embrace the idea that a person of faith might have to say no to some things in order to say yes to God. Why can't we just have it all? I mean, we're a have it all kind of people. Why does God make us turn away from other gods? I love this very simple example from Working Preacher. You cannot believe that two plus two equals four and that 2 plus 2 equals 5 at the same time. We can't believe that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have created, redeemed, and empowered us for service and at the same time believe that some other power can accomplish that same outcome. Our spouse cannot love us enough to save us. Living through our children will not redeem our past mistakes. The greatest success in life will not provide meaningful power. Devotion to God will always, always lead to true and meaningful priorities that benefit every relationship in our lives. However, misplaced devotion will have the complete opposite effect. Here's the thing. We can know this. We can even believe this. We can believe that, yes, if I put God first and foremost, then everything else in my life is going to fall into place. But we struggle to love God more than we love things, more than we love ourselves. Because the reality is we have many gods, many things that we love and trust more than we love and trust God, whether we want to admit it or not. And that's what brings us to the third word, 
God has given us the divine name. In the Old Testament, it's called YHWH, the Lord. In the New Testament, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So that we might call upon that name for forgiveness. So that we can sing out praise. So that we can worship His name. So that we can pray for deliverance and healing. God's name was poured out on us in baptism. And our journey of faith is all about learning to use God's name properly. Using God's name in vain is about much more than refraining to speak a cuss word. It's about living a life representing the name of God that we have been gifted We understand that at least somewhat. We can bring honor and shame to our family names by our actions. We're children of the King. We carry the name of Christ. Our lives represent our Heavenly Father, the way we treat people, the way that we interact, our priorities, our service, our purpose. They all matter. Not using God's name in vain is about living your life in a manner that doesn't bring dishonor to the name Christian, to dishonor to the name son and daughter of the king, but instead brings glory and honor to the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Fourth, loving God means keeping the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a day of worship, focusing on God's word. It's a day of gathering in community with others who are forgiven and sent on a mission. Take just a minute and look around you. You understand that's what the people in this room are, right? They are not perfect. They have accepted Christ and they are justified and made right with God and they are in the process of becoming sanctified or made perfect, but not a one of us is there yet. So please, don't expect that out of any of us. We are sinners saved by grace. We are forgiven and sent on a mission. We are instructed to set aside a day for hearing the preaching of the word, a time to sing and to praise, a day of fellowship, of learning, of conversation, and encouragement to one another. A day that babies are dedicated to God and families are celebrated. A day that we remember that sin and death have been defeated and that the ultimate victory has been won. Sabbath is a day of rest and justice. The Sabbath was the first fair labor law. The heads of households were required to rest along with the working poor, the slaves, even the animals were to be given rest. All of creation matters to the Creator. Keeping the Sabbath is about lives that are captured by a God who keeps faith with us and who keeps on graciously entering into our lives, entering into all lives. According to Deuteronomy, the reason that we keep Sabbath is that the people knew what life was like living under Pharaoh. They were required to work sunup to sundown, never a day to rest. When they complained, Pharaoh said, make their work harder. Take away the straws and let them make bricks without straw. And God graciously stepped in and said, You will no longer serve Pharaoh. You will serve me. And to serve me means that every seven days, you and your kids and your workers and even your animals, you get the day off. Why? Because God's grace was not a one-time event, but a regular, ritualized reality. happens over and over and over again. And this reality extends beyond just one day a week. In the Old Testament laws, God offers a series of other sabbatical laws. Once every seven years, they were to refrain from harvest. They could plant, they could grow, but they were not to pick. The seventh year, you shall let the land rest. Why? So that the poor among you may eat. Now God's grace is ritualized over the course of years, and it's for the sake of the poor. But I believe it's also for the sake of the rich providing them with an opportunity to experience what it's like to care for for another and to realize that you make the sacrifice 
or others, and you receive God's abundance and care for your needs. You don't have to rely on yourself or your work. When your reliance is centered on God, God takes care of your needs. Once every seven years, all debts were to be forgiven. All debts. Once every seven years, all debts were for, to be forgiven. Why? For the sake of charity and stewardship. God says give. Give liberally and give ungrudgingly. God's desire that was that people would never be bound by accumulation or greed or the desire to take advantage of others. The Ten Commandments, guys, are God's guidance continuing, helping, helping us to continue to live into the freedom that he's given us. Likewise, every, every seven years, slaves were to be set free. God's grace setting the captive free. We have been set free. And now we're empowered to offer the same freedom to others. This is such good stuff if we can let our minds grasp it. Every seven years, all land was to be returned to the original family. God's grace given to ensure the means of life were never monopolized by a few. Also symbolic that even though things are lost, they will be returned in God's time because God is the ultimate restorer of all things. You notice the keeping the Sabbath, it has much more to do than showing up at church one day a week. It's about an entire way of life, a way of life that is in keeping with the one who keeps faith with us. So what does that mean to us here and now? Everything means everything. This week, I was taught by the witness and example of an incredible woman. From my perspective, she has faith that is stronger than um, nearly anyone that I've ever met. And yet, she is being held back for the love of what I would consider to be nothing more than trash. It's obviously costing her. And to me, it seems uh, to hold her back from the fullness of life that God would have for her. But I can't judge situations and circumstances of others except to apply those lessons to my own experience. What I have to do is ask myself, what do I hold near and dear? Where do I cling and invest in what is reality? Nothing more than garbage. What are in my storehouses that are doing nothing more than weighing me down. It's easy to look at somebody else's life and to identify those things, but it's not so easy when we are asked to do the same, when we do the very same thing, we just do it differently. And that's where the passage comes in helpful for us. If we apply it and ask, where do I, what do I put? What do I put before God? Where do I invest more time and money and thought uh, than I do in Him? Am I devoted more to something than I am to God? Is my trust for my happiness and well-being placed in anything or anyone other than God? If I'm hurt, if I'm discouraged, if I'm tired, if I'm stressed, do I turn to something or someone or do I turn to God? Am I using God's name in vain? When others are around me, do my words and actions represent my devotion to my Creator or would those around me observe that I am wholeheartedly devoted elsewhere. I can learn a lot by applying sabbatical law, but if we keep ourselves busy with work, we may never recognize the truth. We have to be still. We have to stop for one day a week and focus on our connection to God by trusting that that God will minister to our needs and let us know what it is that's hindering and holding us back. And then we can ask the questions. You understand what I'm saying? Recognize our thoughts are not God's thoughts and our ways are not God's ways. And we have to step out of our own life for just one day a week and focus on what it is that God has for us before we examine ourselves. We need to invite the Spirit into the process. Am I willing to leave the harvest once every seven years for somebody else to gather? Not, notice, not every year. We don't leave the harvest every year, but at the completion of a cycle, am I willing to let go and let somebody else benefit from my labor? 
Am I willing to forgive a debt? Let completely go of something that I'm owed. And note, it's not only possessions that keep us in bondage. It's all kinds of unforgiveness or holding on to things that we are rightly entitled to. I'm all about, am I all about helping others walk into the freedom that I have been provided? And am I confident that anything I've lost, anything that I have had taken from me, will be restored by God who promises justice for all. This is not a set of rules and regulations established to keep us in bondage. Quite the opposite. These are God's words to help us live fully into the freedom that God has granted for each and every individual. Mm, Today. Today may they accomplish that purpose for each and every one of us. Amen. As I invite the band back to play another song, I want to invite each and every one of you to consider if you've ever never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to do so. We'll walk you through that process as best we're able. And if you do not have a community with whom you serve, who encourages and supports and guides you through the journey of life, we invite you to join with ours where all, is, where all are welcome. Today you've gathered. You have gathered in this place intent to connect to God during this time. Be still. Let the Spirit speak to you about the things that hinder you and hold you back and what you can do to let go of those things and step completely and fully into the fullness of life that he has for you. Listen to the rhythm of his unfailing heart of love, beating for his little ones, calling each of us to come.
Just as God swept across the wilderness and drew people toward that holy mountain, he invites us to gather at this table. And as we come to this holy place, he commands us to be reconciled to one another and to him. With humility before God and with love for all people, we come. Settling down, setting down our idols and distractions, setting down our grievances and jealousies, setting down our working and our raging against the world, picking up a spirit of peace and fellowship and openness. We come to be with Christ. We are invited guests at Jesus' table where we share in table fellowship and we are instructed to renew the covenant he has made with us on every occasion when we eat the bread of life and drink the cup of salvation in remembrance of him. Like the Jews of old, we wait at the foot of the mountain for laws. Like the Jews, we wait for a leader to show us the way. In accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we acknowledge that we know about the Christian life. Yet it seems so hard at times to follow the teachings of Jesus crucified. Yet in these words, that meal is made real for us. By eating the bread and drinking from the cup, we begin to know the meaning of the words, Christ crucified and your great love for us, God. Help us to live more fully in your law of love. Amen.
is all I see Anywhere your eyes are on this child Your grace abounds to me Your grace abounds to me On the night when he was gathered with the disciples in the upper room, Christ took the bread and giving thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, it is for you. In the same way, he poured out the cup and giving thanks, he said, this wine represents my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins who all, for all who will receive. As you eat of this bread and as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Thanks be to God. We're going to stand and speak the words of benediction over one another as Marie and the girls come back to carry out the light. If you will, please stand. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Amen. As they come forward, I just want to say once again what an incredible blessing it was to be a part of the dedication service of these three incredible young men. I want to thank their families for entrusting us with the honor of celebrating that occasion. We're ready, girls. You can carry it out. And know that we promise to love you and your kids in the best ways possible. And these girls, too. Go and serve the Lord.